Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. We are back again with a new video. What is a closure in Python? If you have ever written a function inside another function in Python and then returned it, you have already touched the world of closure, maybe without even knowing it. So in today's video, we are going to break down what is a closure in Python, how it works and why it's useful and walk through some simple examples. So by the end of this video, you'll understand closures clearly without any confusion, no jargon. So let's start the video. So firstly, let us understand what is closure. We'll start with the basics. A closure in Python is a function object that remembers values in enclosing scopes even if those scopes are not present anymore. In more simple words, we can say that a closure is a function defined inside another function that remembers the variable from outer function, even after the outer function has finished executing. That means you can still use the values from the outer function later. So let's write a very simple example using closure. So here we wa here what we do is this is your outer function and it makes it takes one parameter x So and this is our inner function which takes parameter y and the third line it returns x plus y here it's using the value from x from the outer function so in this line we return the inner function not by calling it just returning the function itself now let's initialize closures in this and let's see its output So here what happens is we call the outer function 5 so x is equals to 5 it returns inner function which remembers x is equals to 5 and now we add 5 which passes 10 is actually calling inner function 10 which returns 5 plus 10 is equals to 15 so as we can see this gives the output as 15 so that's a closure inner function remembers the value of x even the outer function has finished so hope you understand this example and now let's move into another example which is creating a multiplier so let's make a more practical example a function that creates a multiplier so let's start this example So here we create a function make multiplier which passes a parameter n which can be outer function then we create another function def multiplier which passes the single parameter x so this can be the inner function then we return x into n. So let's use this. So 
So here make multiplier 3 returns a multiplier function that multiplies anything by 3. When we call times 3 into 15 it's like saying 5 into 3. So even though you make multiplier is finished multiplier still remembers n is equals to 3. So we can see its output as 3 multiplied by 5 is 15. So here how closures work so simply. So now let's dive into another example in a pattern which is used in decorators, event handling and more. So know how to know it's a closure. So let's see how to know it's a closure. If you want to check if a function is a closure. So Python makes it easy that how you can check a function is a closure. So let's check it. So if this prints a tuple, that's your closed over variables. You can also see the actual value. So let's see what this gives as the output. So as we can see this gives the output as 3. So now let's see some common use cases of closures. So let's say you want to protect some data and only allow access through function. So closures help with that also. So let's see a basic example of that. So here we have created a function make counter and count is equals to 0 which is 0 lives in the outer function and then we have created a, another function which is count. So we use non-local to modify count inside the inner function. So as I told you we use non-local count to modify the inner function. So every time we call my counter function it remembers and updates the value of count. So as we can see it outputs every time we'll print my counter function it will print an ascending value. See, this is how it's simple to run. So now let me tell you when to use closures. So closures are perfect when you want to create a function factories and you want to create data hiding, you are building decorators or you want a cleaner alternative to classes for simple use cases. And secondly I'll tell you a basic difference between closure versus objects. So some people ask why not just use a class instead. That's valid. A class can also encapsulate data and behavior just like closures. But closures are lightweight and more functional style. They are great when you don't need all the powers of a class. So 
I told you what closures are, how they work, simple example and practical use cases. So closure might sometimes seem tricky at first but once you understand the concept of function remembering data it becomes simple and powerful. So if you found this helpful don't forget to hit a like button and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching this video.